In today's uh, recording, I want to go over some different types of encodings. Encodings are pretty cool. There's something how you can kind of put together how the binary ones and zeros are going to look on a medium, let's say a wire. It's also something that you're never really going to have to know in real life. Uh, you never need to know, oh, this is how an encoding goes. It's more of an understanding of, okay, so we have these ones and zeros that then eventually are going to go on a medium, a wire, wireless, uh, and we have to translate these into some sort of representation of these ones and zeros. So today I want to go over three different encodings. The Manchester encoding, our um, the first encoding that we're going to go over, we're going to go over MLT3 and non-return to zero inverted. And these all have different types. MLT3, by the way, stands for multi-line transmission three level. So if we start with Manchester encoding. We're encoding these binary bits of zeros and ones. Every time there's a zero, there's going to be some sort of transition. Every time there's a one, there's going to be some sort of transition. So take a look at the screen here. When there's a zero, we're going to see a pattern that starts up high and going to go down low. Whenever there's a one, we're going to have a pattern that starts low and then it's going to raise high. And this low and high are voltage. It's going to be voltage that's going to be on a wire. So let's take a look at this again. So on this screen, if you take a look, this is time going from left to right. This is voltage, this is negative voltage, this is going to be positive voltage. It doesn't show it here, but take that for what it is. Negative, positive. Each time there's a one, we have the pattern that rises. There's another one, the pattern rises, and another one, the pattern rises. When we have a zero, the pattern is going to go down. So let's take a look at that on an example. Here I have the encoding of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. I have a positive and a negative. Whenever there's a zero, we're going to have the pattern. Let me just make that a little clearer. We're going to have a pattern of going down. Whenever there's a one, we're going to have a pattern of rising. So we have a zero, we go down. We have a one, we're going to rise. A zero, it goes down. A one, it rises. A zero, it goes down. A one, it rises. And again, a zero, we go down. And a one, it rises. So that's that representation of what that binary pattern would look like in Manchester encoding. Let's do one more example. We have 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is positive, this is negative. A 1, we are going to rise. A 0, we're going to go from positive to negative. So here we go. The 1, we rise. We have another 1, we're going to rise. Another 1, it's going to rise. And another 1, it's going to rise. Then we have to connect it. So that's that next step. If you have consecutive ones or consecutive zeros and you have that same pattern, you need to connect it in between. So for example, with these zeros, you have this pattern. In between, you need to make sure they're connected. The signal needs to continue going. And that's Manchester encoding. OK, the next encoding that we're going to go over is going to be MLT3. So here we moved on from our 10 gigabit or 10 megabits per second, which is what the Manchester encoding was. Then we moved to fast Ethernet, which is 100 megabits per second. In this case, we needed um, some more or a more efficient encoding, where it's there's two that we're going to go over for this fast Ethernet, 100 megabits per second. We're going to go over MLT3, which is multi-line transmission, and non-return to zero inverted. First, let's go with MLT3. This is probably the one that I find to be the most complicated out of it. It's still, it's very manageable, 
but it has a few different considerations to take place here. We're going to have three rules. These three rules are going to be if the next bit is a zero, you're not going to do anything. You're going to continue, well, you're going to continue the signal along at the voltage it's currently at. If the next bit is one and the current voltage level is not zero and here zero, we actually have three voltages this time. We're going to have a positive voltage, a zero voltage, which will be neutral, and a negative voltage. So unlike Manchester encoding, where we only had positive and negative, now we have three levels of encode of uh, voltage. This is going to be positive. The zero right here will be our neutral. And then this will be our negative. So again, to the first step, if the next bit is a zero, there's going to be no transition. You're just going to continue the signal on at the voltage that it's at. If the next bit is a one, and the current voltage level is not zero, then the next level is going to be zero. So rule number two says, let's take a look right here. We have a zero, our current level is positive. It says if the next bit is a one, which right here our next bit is a one, and the current voltage level is not zero, which in this case it's not zero because it's a positive voltage there, the next level is zero. So here, the signal changes from positive down to neutral to that zero there. If the next bit is a one and the current voltage level is zero, the next level is the opposite of the last non-zero. So now this is step number three. We're asking if the next bit is a one, here the next bit is going to be a one, and the current voltage level is zero, which here our current voltage level is zero, then the next level is the opposite of the last non-zero. So what's the opposite of the last non-zero? Here, this was our last non-zero, it was positive. So that means our opposite of the last non-zero has to be the negative. And this is why in this case, we went down to negative. We had a zero, so we're gonna go to step one and our voltage is gonna remain the same at negative. We have another one, and if the next bit is a one and the current voltage level is not zero, then the next level is going to be zero. So we went back to zero there. And then we had another zero. And in this time, we're going to continue the voltage on at that level. So let me go to my iPad and go over two examples with the same binary pattern that we had. Let me just broadcast this onto here. Okay, that came right up. So. Here, I have a 1111000. One, 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 zero, 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 zero. Look, you can start with the previous encoding or binary pattern that we had last time. We're going to have three levels now. We have a positive, we have a zero, and we have a negative. In this case now, I wanted to make a note that we're starting with a positive voltage. Pervious, previous, I misspelled here. That's okay. Just let know that we are starting, you can imagine that we had a positive one to begin with. Just because we need to know what our previous voltage was according to our rule. Um, we just need to know where we're at and where we're going. We need to look back according to our rules. So we start up here, we're starting positive. We have a one. And if our current level is not zero, which is rule number, or rule number two here, we're going to go to zero. So here we go to zero. We have another one. Our current level is at zero. It is at neutral. And in this case, we need to take a look at what was our previous last non-zero, which it was this right here. It was positive. So now we need to go down to negative. Again, we're going to have another one. And in this case, we're not at zero. So we're going to go back to zero following rule number two. And now we have another one. We're going to have to get off of neutral. So we're going to have to look back at what our previous value was, which was this right here. And we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to go up. We have zeros in consecutive order here. Each time there's a zero, there's going to be no transition. We're just going to continue the signal on at the level that it currently is at. So in this case, we're going to just continue on. And that's an example of MLT3.
let me go to an example one more. We're going to use that same binary pattern of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. We have a positive, we have a neutral, and we have a negative. Again, we're going to start with a positive voltage, so we can imagine that we have a 1 here to begin with. We start with a 0, we're going to continue the signal on at the level that it was currently at. So we stayed positive. The next bit is a 1. So in this case, when we have this 1, we're going to we're going to go back to neutral. So we're going to go down. We have another zero, so we're going to stay at neutral. We have another one, and we're going to go to the previous, or we're going to take a look back at what our last non-zero value was, which was positive, and we're going to do the opposite of it. So now we're going to go down to negative. We have a zero, so we're going to stay at neutral. Oh, sorry. We're going to stay at negative in that case. We're just going to continue the signal on from the negative down to the negative. Stay there. And now we have another one. So we have to go back to neutral because we're negative. This is that rule number two. If we're at uh, either a positive or a negative and we have a one, we want to return back to neutral. We have a zero, so we're going to stay at neutral. We're going to just continue the signal on. And then we have a one, so we're going to rise back to positive. And we rise back to positive because that's the opposite of what we did at our last non-neutral. So that's MLT3. Our next encoding that we're going to have is going to be non-return to zero inverted. Here, we have a two-level encoding. We're going back just like how Manchester encoding was, where we had positive and we had negative. Neutral isn't going to be in part of consideration for the non-return to zero inverted. Here, we have two very simple rules. Every time you're going to have a 1, the voltage is going to change from negative to positive or from positive to negative. Whenever there's a 0, we're going to follow that same rule that we just had in MLT3, and we're going to continue the voltage on at the current, or we're going to continue the signal on at the current voltage that it's at. So here, if we want to start here, let's say, let's say the signal in this case started at, at negative. We had a one, so it rises up. We have to go from negative to positive every time there's a one, or from positive to negative, depending on where the signal's at. So we said the signal started at negative. So we had a one, we went to positive. We have two zeros. Each time there's a zero, we're going to continue the signal on at the voltage it's at. So it's going to continue on one, or sorry, it's going to continue on at positive, positive, stay where it's at. We have another one, so it's going to transition from positive to negative. We have another one, so it's going to transition from negative to positive. And then we have a zero, so it's going to continue to the voltage, or continue at positive voltage here. Uh, and stay at positive. Next time we have a 1, we're going to transition down to negative. The next time we have a 0, we're going to stay at that negative. So each time you have a 1, we're going to do a transition. Each time you have a 0, you're going to stay. So let's go back to the iPad one last time and take a look at this encoding. So, here we are. We're going to start the same way as we do with the other ones. I'm going to just draw the encoding or draw the binary pattern out on top of the area we're going to draw it out. I have a positive, I have a negative. That's only two levels of voltage that we're going to use here. We're going to say here, again, we're going to have the positive voltage. So, you can imagine again, just like we did. In Manchester or in MLT3 encoding, we started with the imaginary binary one because we need to see where we were in order to make a decision of where to go. So with the zero, we're just going to continue the signal on. With the one, we're going to change transition and we're going to go from positive to negative. The zero, we're going to continue the signal on. With the one, we'll make that transition from negative to positive. 0 we continue, a 1 we make the transition, a 0 we continue, and a 1 we make that transition.
probably the simplest out of all of them. Every time there's a one, we change. Every time there's a zero, we continue. And for one more example, we'll use that same one, 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 zero, 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 positive, negative. Every time there's a one, again, we have to start with the one. Every time there's a one, we'll transition. So we're just going to be transitioning back and forth. And then zeros, we're going to continue and keep the signal where it's at. And that's non-return to zero inverted. That's our three encodings that we're going to understand in this lesson. Turn off my iPad real quick and go back to the PowerPoint. So as I said, you don't really need to know this ever in your life. You're never going to have to prove that you know this. Um, but it's pretty cool to understand how we have a binary pattern. It needs to be transitioned into an electrical signal. That electrical signal needs to travel from one node to another node. And when that other node receives it, it needs to know how to make sense out of it. So these were our first few different encodings. They're quite simple. As we get up to gigabit speeds, our encodings get a lot more complex. And we're not going to dig into that. But I do want to mention that when you have a long string of binary zeros. In that case, the computer nodes can lose synchronization. And that's sort of the example. I shouldn't have closed my iPad because I could go back to what we had. Let me just open, go back to that. When you have a long string of binary zeros, as we have in these other, these last two examples, over time, because the signal staying so constant, the receiving node might lose synchronization and lose track of the binary that's come, or lose track of the signal that's coming in and lose track saying, was it eight binary zeros? Was it nine binary zeros? Because the signal doesn't change, the transition doesn't change, and the timing of the synchronization between the receiving signal to that node could cause some problems. So we needed some way to fix that. And in that case, we went to 4B to 5B mapping. Here, we had long strings of zeros. Every time we have a 4-bit number, we're going to translate it to a 5-bit number. So that case, we should never have longer than a few zeros, maybe no, no, no longer than three zeros or two zeros in this case. Actually, it's two zeros looking at our 5-bit values. Every time the binary leaves the computer NIC, it's going to be translated from these four digits to those five digits along the whole pattern as the signal is leaving the node. So in this case, we fix that problem. We no longer are going to have a long consecutive string of zeros. That's, that's one enhancement on the three encodings we just went over. Moving on, when we get to gigabit Ethernet, we're going to start to use all four wires, or all eight wires in this case, to make this transition, we're going to be using different, we, we went to five levels of voltage levels. So you can see how this modulation is just getting more and more complex, but more and more efficient in the same way. We get to use all the wires, or four wires at a time to send a signal, four wires at a time to receive a signal between the two nodes, and we're using one, two, three, four, five different levels of voltage, which that way we're able to send more data at the same time in order to get from 100 megabits per second to 1,000 gigabits per second to, or sorry, 1,000 megabits per second to one gigabit of data at a time.